Hey, how's it going? My name is Jay. In this video, we're going to have a quick look at how you can configure Nginx as a reverse proxy. Reverse proxy being one of the most widely used use case for uh, Nginx instance. Let's get straight into it. So what we're going to look at is, of course, we'll have a quick look at a high level understanding of a forward proxy and reverse proxy. We'd look at the proxy pass directive, which Nginx utilizes to forward the request to a upstream or a backend server. And then we'll also look at redefining the request headers, essentially to try and capture all the details of the original requester or the original, original uh, client and how to forward that details to the actual backend server via the proxy. So before we jump in and talk about uh, reverse proxy in particular, I'd just like to highlight the fact that Nginx, uh, extremely lightweight, resilient, very, very popular as a web server, but the functionality of Nginx does not act as, uh, does not stop at a reverse proxy or a web server. The green boxes you see on the screen uh, right now, these are all the functionalities you can achieve with a single instance of Nginx. Also on top of that, you can run Nginx wherever you want. I've, Pasted a few logos of a few cloud providers here. However, you can run Nginx on any cloud as far as you've got a supported Linux operating system. With that, let's get started. So the focus on uh, this video is of reverse proxy. So let's jump straight into it. So what, what exactly is a reverse proxy? So generally, there are two ways to think about a proxy. One is a forward proxy which is essentially a client-side proxy which conceals the identity or acts in place of the clients. And the second one is a reverse proxy, which is a server-side proxy, which consists, which conceals the identity of the actual backend application service, or at times acts in place of these backend application servers. Organizations generally deploy Nginx as a reverse proxy. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the worst, one of the most common use cases for uh, Nginx instance. Now, how does Nginx does that? Nginx does proxying by utilizing the proxy pass directive. So the proxy pass directive moves an incoming request to a replacement destination at the backend. So address can be a domain name, an IP address, port, Unix socket, upstream name, or even a set of variables. Syntax for this directive or the proxy pass directive is very simple. It's proxy pass followed by a destination. And it's only generally utilized in a server and location context. In the example you see on the screen right now, what we have is https www.example.com. Nginx matches this specific request against the slash and forwards the request to the destination, which in this case is 10.1.1.4. So the destination IP address is most likely a web server or an application server sitting behind a firewall. And Perhaps the IP address of the Nginx plus instance or Nginx instance, which you see here, would only be the IP address which would, which would have access to the backend application server. So the clients connect to this reverse proxy and the reverse proxy, which is your Nginx instance, has access to the backend application server. Sounds easy. And it definitely is. And we'll have a look at, uh, look at how easy it is to configure a reverse proxy in the demo after. However, one thing we need to understand is the behavior of Nginx. And Nginx's default behavior is to close the connection uh, before it goes out and initiates a new connection to the backend. So in this process, some of the original request information will be lost. Say, for example, when an original request is made from a, a client or a browser from your laptop, hits the reverse proxy and that information goes get sent to the backend service. So Nginx terminates that connection at that reverse proxy point. So you want to try and ensure that you capture some of the details like the actual IP address of the original client, uh, the host details, what you are writing the request. You want to try and capture it and you want to forward that to the backend or the upstream application server. Uh, the reason for this task is because the log files of the backend application server captures a request coming from Nginx instance. And now if every single request has originated from the Nginx reverse proxy to try and make sense of the data which you've collected at the backend uh, gets, I'd say it, it's an impossible task because every single request 
from that application server perspective comes from the reverse proxy and you don't want that. You want to try and capture the original IP address and forward that back. So how do we do that? In the example, what we see right now, what we can use is a directive called proxy set header. And essentially what this directive does is it enables Nginx to redefine or rewrite the request header, which, which comes in. So essentially in this case, what happens is Nginx replaces the host header with the variable, which is dollar host when it sends a request to the backend server. In the second example, what we have here is a proxy set header captures the original IP address of the requester and forwards that to the backend application server. So essentially uh, telling the backend application server that this is the IP of the original requester for this request. And the final proxy set header, what you see over here, uh, creates a list of various addresses that the IP uh, and the request has actually traversed through before it hits the backend application server. So in some of the cases, you'd probably have uh, uh, a couple of web servers, a couple of proxies before the actual request hits the backend applica application server. So in a scenario like that, Nginx would go out and collect all those IPs and send that information to the actual backend application server. So from a slideware perspective, this is all I had. So this just sets the scene, gives you a high level understanding of what a reverse proxy does. So with that, let's quickly jump into a demo. So I'll show you how that actually works in action. What I have here on my local computer is a virtual machine. And in this virtual machine, just that's right, got the world's most secure password and I've got a VM running. So I've got Nginx installed on it. So we'll do Nginx-V and you'd see that I've got Nginx R24 installed on it. So let's jump in here. And have a look at the configuration. So if we do cat nginx.conf, it's a stock standard configuration is what I have. Uh, nothing fancy over here. If I cd to conf D directory, that excuse me, that is where I have my configuration files, do a ls on it. You'd see that I've got a default.conf, which essentially is uh, acting as a reverse proxy. In my case, my backend application is still running on the same host. In your case, this application would be perhaps somewhere in the backend or could be a different IP address. In, in my scenario, it, that application is running on the local host. By the cat web.conf, uh, this is the actual application which we are trying to run. So in this scenario, as you can see, Nginx is acting as a web server, hosting the application and also acting as a reverse proxy for, for this case. So uh, as simple uh, as that, I can go out and do curl, if I can type correctly, localhost, you can see that it's wrapping that request to application one at the backend. So if I do curl localhost 9001, this is the actual application. This is in a way the backend application which Nginx is routing to. So Nginx is acting as a reverse proxy, listening to port 80. And every time that request comes in, it, 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 it proxy passes that request to the backend of the upstream server in, in our case, which is the port 9001. So in a scenario like this, uh, if I was to try and access this box from my local computer, so let's jump up here. Do this and what I have is open a terminal window. And so what I'm doing is accessing my VM from my local machine. I'll just make a call and the IP address for this virtual machine is 192.168.153.187 and hit enter on there. You'd get the response back that this is what it is actually doing. Let's see if I can actually access the uh, actual application on port 9001 as well. Hopefully I should be able to access, but if I can't, nothing to worry, but let's give it a test. And yes, the port's open in my case. So if you do this and go hit 9001, you're still able to access the backend application. In your production environments, this should be stopped because only the 
the local host of the reverse proxy or the IP address of the reverse proxy would be allowed to access the backend application, but uh, a simple test. However, the point I'm trying to make here is to try and show you what information gets captured in the logs. So let's just jump in and have a look at the logs. So if you access the logs over here, you can see that these logs, it's not really giving you a lot of information. So you can see the past command is actually a curl request. In fact, every single request is a curl request. So let's just go and make a browser-based request. And hit refresh a couple of times. So I'm just accessing a browser out here. In fact, I can just do that here as well. example.com hit refresh a couple of times and let's look at the cat log right now and see what there we go we've captured some information however you can see it is not relevant information which we can utilize and you want to try and capture the actual requester the uri which was requested and you want to forward that to the backend application server so for that let's go out and edit our config file to try and capture those specific details using uh, using the variable, uh, using the directive we talked about earlier. So let's just jump in to gedit.conf. Type in my world's most secure password. And what I have is I have configured a few files over here, which we'll is come out here. Hit enter, essentially, just to ensure that my fat fingers don't steal the show and I'm typing incorrectly. Uh, is pre-prepared. We'll leave it there. So essentially what we're doing is we're setting proxy set header and we're grabbing the host and we're replacing the value with the variable. So the entire list of Nginx variables is available on nginx.org where you can capture those values from uh, by defining a variable itself. And I've been a little cheeky and I've just added a sample header. So when we go out, access the browser, we just want to try and see that we've injected a response header, which we should be able to see. Perfect, I'm just gonna save this over here. Close this and go sudo nginx. Perfect, so we've reloaded the configuration, everything works fine. And if I was to try and do a curl on localhost, and now this is port 9000, and I'm gonna try and do a V to try and get more information. Let's hit enter. And hey, there we go. So the cheeky little header, which I inserted, test header, has made it through in the response header. So essentially, it goes to show that all the information which we provided, it is actually going out and capturing that. However, to try and test it, let's just try and write a custom log file so that we can actually view the specific uh, uh, proxy set header values which we have set. So for that, we need to create a new log format to try and capture the specific values we have inserted. So for that, edit the file again, edit the nginx con file again. Just make this full screen so life's a little easier. And what I'm going to do, once again, is to save myself from embarrassment. I'll just copy and paste the uh, text over here. And also out here, what we need is access log. So essentially for this specific server, we are writing that to a separate log file. And this is also a very good practice. So if you've got a few different servers running, you want to try and create separate access files for capturing logs for each separate server. So essentially it's just very neat. If something was to go wrong, or if you wanted to try and dig through some data, very, very easy if you're writing a separate file. And out here, I've just written a customized log format. I've called it custom log and that's what I'm utilizing out here. And I've just gone out and typed in some requests which I am capturing. Let's save that. Uh, also, I'll share the link to all these details in my GitHub repo, which you can look from the links uh, down below. Perfect. Now that we've reloaded that, let's go out and do cd 
log nginx and see what file. And we've got the custom access log file. So let's just tail that file, file and see what we get. So now that we've done this, at this stage, I'm just accessing it from the box itself. So you'd see that the IP addresses and the host IP would all look very similar because everything's running from my local computer. So let's just go out and hit enter here, hit refresh, and there we go. It's captured all the details out here. As you can see that this is a Firefox browser. So the user client, it's captured all the details of the user client. The proxy host name, uh, it's routed. So this request is routed to this specific backend. The proxy IP address is, is what we've requested. The client IP address is exactly the same because I'm trying to access it from the same box itself. So as you can see, uh, it has captured all the information for us and uh, it's populated right here. So in short, this is all I wanted to show you in terms of engine, configuring Nginx as a reverse proxy, uh, setting proxy set header values to ensure that you capture all the values and pass it to the actual backend application server. And you can go out and make configuration changes in your log files to try and capture relevant information. Perfect, guys. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you very much. Bye.